I'd like to call on Representative Boylan uh, with House Bill 7246. Thank you very much and good evening. Uh, before I explain what this bill H7246 does, let me provide a little background. During the first year of each new or reelected gubernatorial administration, current law mandates that the governor shall convene an economic development planning council. The Economic Development Corporation, which is now Rhode Island Commerce, and the Economic Development Planning Council develop a written long-term economic development vision and policy for the state of Rhode Island and a strategic plan for implementing this policy that must currently include reliance on comprehensive economic data and analysis relating to Rhode Island's economic competitiveness, business climate, national and regional reputation, and present economic development resources. Given our state's vulnerability to climate change and sea level rise, and given our commitment to the Act on Climate to mitigate the negative consequences of climate change, Bill H7246 adds the terms climate change, sea level rise, and coastal resiliency to the factors that must be relied upon for this strategic plan and economic development policy. The second thing that this bill does is expand the Economic Development Planning Council membership by two seats. It would add the director of the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management, DEM, and the director of the Coastal Resources Management Council, CRMC. DEM has supported this bill with a letter from Terry Gray that has been submitted to the committee. In addition, you'll see a letter from Commerce Secretary Liz Tanner in support of the bill. The Senate passed this bill last year, so I'm hopeful that we can do the same here this year. Happy to take any questions. Any questions from the committee? No. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the last one is 7246. This is a bill adding some things to how we do economic development in Rhode Island and how we think about it. I have been actively participating in the public discussion about how we do economic development in Rhode Island since I moved here in 1996. So it's 27 years that I have been actively reading reports from the, from the government of Rhode Island, participating in public hearings of all kinds in, here, in front of the legislature, in front of um, administrative bodies. We do a lousy job. You know, we just, we just have a really screwy approach to economic development. The way we do economic development in Rhode Island is we give money to rich people and, um, you know, say, go do your thing. You know, 38 Studios is a prime example of what happens in this state. What we really need to do is start to think about what is the economy going to do in the future. And what the economy is going to do in the future, it is going to have to shrink. And it is going to shrink because we are depleting all of the resources on this planet. I mean, immensely. You know, we're running out of sand for construction in many places in the world. Not only are we running out of trees, we're running out of clean air, we're look, running out of places to put the trash. And we really need to protect those things. 7246 calling for you to put in climate change as we look at the economic development and all of the different manifestations is absolutely essential. I have just produced a paper called Why We Need a Climate Justice Economy. We have actually looked at all of the different ways we do economic development in Rhode Island. I have 20 years of papers. I sent you a paper with links and, you know, by email. I would hope you all will look at it. We have done um, 
if you are going to have an economy that works in the future, it needs to do two things. It needs to get right with climate, which this bill covers, and I commend that and I support that. The other thing you need to do is you need to start from the bottom up. We do economic development from the top down when what we really need to do is economic development in our lowest income communities, in our um, black and brown communities, because if you have an economy that works for the people at the very lowest ends of the economic scale, it will be working for everybody. everybody if you have low income people who have enough money to go to the store, Every, bar, every part of the economy works. If you don't have an economy working at the bottom, what you get is all kinds of social dislocations. The same thing with climate. The way the climate is going and the way we are not dealing with, with it in this country, if we do not get that straight, we are not going to have an economy. We're not going to have an agricultural system that provides enough food for 8 billion people on the planet or all the people in Rhode Island. We absolutely need to put climate at the very center and justice at the very center of our economic development. If we do not do that, it will not work. I ask you all to read the paper that I sent you. I am also happy to, um, at any other time, talk about this with you individually or as a group because this is a real issue with how we do economic development in Rhode Island. You look at the, at the Commerce Corporation and I, I testified on the, at the Commerce Corporation this year and, and they're basically clueless about the nature of economic development here. And so this, the, what you're adding to the, the bill is a good thing. It doesn't go far enough. Thank you. Okay, we'll stick with that bill, 7246. There's a few other people that are signed up to speak on it. Janine Silversmith. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, my name is Janine Silversmith. I'm representing the Rhode Island Environmental Education Association, and we're in support of this bill. Um, our membership, we're a professional membership association, so our membership includes hundreds of individuals, including youth and students, as well as uh, dozens of environmental organizations who collectively represent thousands of workers in the state of Rhode Island. And what we all know is that in order for economic development to take place, you need workforce development. And for workforce development, you need education. And that starts with our youngest of learners, but it goes all the way through high school, post-secondary, and of course, throughout our careers and throughout our lives, we're always learning. Um, so, you know, when I started coming to the State House a few years ago, I used to say, um, every profession is about to change. And now they're, they're already changing. You know, we speak to people who fish and do aquaculture. Um, and across all the industries and professions in Rhode Island, everything's changing because of our changing climate. So we really feel it's necessary for um, the Economic Development Planning Council because it does have the Commissioner of Education and the Commissioner of Higher Education sitting on that council to um, include climate change and sea level rise and coastal resiliency when it's making its um, plans for the future. Um, and the last thing I'll say, because I'll try to keep it short, I know it's a long night, um, is that education is so often overlooked when we think about the climate crisis and how to deal with it. And like I said, from the youngest of our learners all the way through our lives, we are always learning and it's really important that we remember that it's a key component in the climate crisis. And I'll take any questions. Any questions from the committee? No? Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, now let's see, uh, Camille mm -hmm. Nixon. Hi, Hi. Um, I'm with Climate Action Rhode Island and uh, I'm also a grandmother. I'm here to support, let me take this off, I think I can manage that. Uh, we're trying to bring the, the climate emergency to the forefront of our decision making for Rhode Island with Climate Action Rhode Island. And for the country, Rhode Island and the world, Rhode Island has a great opportunity to be a beacon for the nation on how to integrate climate data into economic development. Our opportunity to show the country how we can protect ourselves from climate change in order to achieve 
great economic prosperity because we will consider the crucial input from experts like the CRMC and the DEM on how to proceed with robust development while keeping the climate safe. We're overdue in considering climate change and how it affects all aspects of our future endeavors. We're way behind. We really need to count on them to help us out with our future in, in the ec economy. And let's include uh, the power of science and information in our decisions for future economic growth so we protect our children's future and our planet. Please vote to adopt climate data as an important resource in informing our economic development. Our economy will flourish if we do. And I have one more. Um, my friend uh, Diane was just going to be speaking, and she <coughs> was her statement was going to be that the climate crisis is upon us. Science tells us that we're not able to reverse the current impact of climate change. So it's the responsibility of government to be realistic and include the impacts of climate change in planning for the future. The directors of DEM and CRMC should be included in the Economic Development Planning Council to provide the necessary data, knowledge, and expertise about the impacts of climate change in Rhode Island. This is essential in protecting the beautiful landscape and seascape, as well as the citizens of Rhode Island from the impacts of climate change. And that's pretty much it. So uh, Diane Hill will not be speaking? Diane had to leave. She had a very important school committee meeting where you know there are some people are being planted right wing that she had to speak up against. Okay. Thank you. Thank Any you. questions for the witness? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right.